Hello everybody, Safa Cobbett, and today we're going to do a painting tutorial, my first. So do be kind, be gentle, if this seems a bit rough and ready, this is, uh, yeah, this is new ground for me. I've had some people ask me in the past, how do you paint, and blah blah blah, and I suddenly thought, working on some more uh, uh, Mordian Iron Guard, um, for obviously for 40k, and uh, whilst I've got a load of models, undercoated, and some ready to go and whatnot, I suddenly thought, hey, this is my chance. I'll do a simple video. These are one of this is one of the more straightforward paint uh, jobs that I do. Um, I've had a lot of people compliment compliment me on my painting, which is very kind and always appreciated. And uh, I thought I'd go for a simple uh, little tutorial, so you guys can see what I do, how I do it, and how I achieve the colours and the uh, well the look that I get from my models. Less is more, in my opinion. Um, I know a lot of uh, official, you know. Uh, painting tutorials and stuff, they, they mention inks, washes, you name it, I'm not into that. There's little amount of paints that I can buy, you know, that I can that I need to buy than I will use. And that's what I tend to do, I tend to make my own shades, make my own mixes. I buy a couple of washes out there, but overall I make my own stuff. As you can see from the limited palette of uh, paints I have here, you can see that this is not going to break your budget. If you want to go for a Praetorian colour scheme, to which is similar to what I use for my Iron Guard. Saying that, you could use these not just on Iron Guard, you could use them on uh, well, any sort of miniature and army offence. You could have red and white shaded dwarves, red and white shaded, well, don't know. Put your own army name in here, really, to be honest. You're absolutely, you know, it's easy to do. But anyway, this is a straightforward, little, simple uh, paint guide. I'm going to run through all the paints I use, the paintbrushes I recommend, and uh, I'm going to paint this fella, this Mordian Iron Guard, in uh, my Praetorian colour uh, scheme, which is simply his uh, a red jacket, all of his trim, his spaldron, uh, spaldrons, is it spaldrons? Uh, things on his shoulders, his cap, uh, they'll be white. Obviously, paint his rifles, boots, and get the finished effect that I have for all my models. How you know how I paint this guy is exactly the same, obviously, with different shades for any other model in my army. Um, I've always had got nice compliments of people for my uh, painting and the look of my armies, which is always nice. So, I thought I'd share my uh, little tips with you. So, without further ado, here is a almost completely undercoated model. As you can see, the boots just need a slight going over. But here he is, and obviously I've undercoated this fella in Aberdeen Black. I tend to paint the undercoat on. I'm not one for spraying. That's because I'm, I'm old school, and uh, sprays weren't around as easily back then. They, they were and they weren't, you know. Um, but yeah, I've painted in black, and he's ready to go once I've finished a few bits and bobs off there. So, the colours I will be using in no particular order-ish. So, you've got Mephiston Red which will eventually become layered up with Evil Sun's Scarlet. This will be for the obviously the most of the model, as for his coat. I've got a couple of pots of Ceramite White. I don't know if anyone else finds this, but I find these, paint, these paints dry out so damn quickly, it's quite annoying. So I've got a couple of them. These will be used for shades, for the uh, trim around the model, his cap, blah, 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 blah. We've got Mournfang Brown. This will be used for his boots. Kisler Flesh, this would be used obviously for his skin, mixed in with Mournfang Brown to get a couple of different shades for his skin. We have some uh, Genner's Gold, we'll be using that for his belt buckle and just like picking out any details. XV88, ta da, we're going to be using that for the rifle itself, for the, uh, the wood of the rifle. We then have Lead Belcher. Which will be used obviously for the metal sections, and we have Runefang Steel for any highlights that this puppy might need. Generally, I don't tend to highlight too much, funnily enough, with a lead belcher, um, only very, very slightly, but it does help just to have a bit of pop, so yeah. And that is it. <clears throat> Those are all the paints that you will need if you want to follow how I paint things, basically. Well, the, the, the Praetorian colour scheme, I should say, sorry, I should probably be less vague. Uh, next up, these are the paint brushes that I'll be using. So we've got artificial layer, whoops, sorry, artificial layer, uh, small. I'll be using that for the reds of his tunic and larger areas. 
and then artificial layer, extra small. That's for all the details, all the fingers, all the little tiny, tiny highlights, and blah, 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 blah. They're the two brushes I will use, and I recommend them more than any other brush, simply because I find the other brushes from the GW range split, they're useless, they don't keep their shape, they are god awful. These brushes are expensive, but by Christ, are they brilliant. This particular brush I've used non stop nearly in every single paint session I've done and it's perfect it's absolutely perfect it's, it's only now starting to wear out to be quite honest and the amount of painting that's done is brilliant so I do recommend them next up obviously I need a little uh, mixing tray this has got over five or six years of paint mixes as you can see it's actually coming over the rim now mainly this is due to laziness on my part when I first started using this I couldn't be bothered to wash it and over time it's kind of become a bit of a testament really to the amount of hours I've spent painting uh, those original shades of mixes you see on the bottom there were for, were for a uh, classic dwarf from god knows when so yeah but you'll need a mixing tray and obviously some uh, tissue to dab with and whatnot and some water in a little cup so yeah I'll finish off undercoating this chap uh, the first stage will be using uh, lead belcher I shall see you shortly Okay guys, so he's undercoated, he's fresh and he's ready to go. So first step, <coughs> I always use metal, I always paint metal bits first, always. Um, that's mainly through either dry brushing or through simply painting it on. Um, but with this model, because of the small details and stuff, and also generally if you want to save time, I find to be quite honest, if you go for a dry brush and you then spend ages retouching up the model with more undercoat or such and such, and I find really sometimes dry brush can be used in the wrong sense because you think you, you, you quickly splosh dry brush all over the model, it bleeds onto other parts of the model. They always say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, you can go back over it again. You can, but I find it's a bit of a waste of effort, especially on models like this. If you've, if you've got the time to sort of spend a minute or two sort of almost painting on, to be quite honest, you do save more time doing that than you do dry brushing, or I do anyway. It's worth a try. If you haven't thought of doing that, give it a little try, because uh, I find it helps greatly um, the way I paint. Um, as always, wet the brush. I always wet the brush. Just got a little bit of lead belcher, so we're going to be using lead belcher for all the metal parts of this model. And that consists of, obviously, the rifle. The other little scope piece here, the end of the rifle. Uh, the little metal piece here, which is I guess at the magazine entrance as such, not the belt buckle, that will be gold. Um, the little uh, buckles on the belt, on the boots, I will paint those metal. Um, and these bits on his dagger will be gold as well. So it's basically just going to be the rifle and the boots uh, belt buckles. Um, yeah, so let's give it a go. Let's crack on with a bit of live recording of the uh, painting of the model this is this is this is cool guys this is my first uh, should be fun like you've never seen someone paint a model before okay so here we go so let's just tip them back so you can see it so yeah I'm just gonna just literally go with the rifle just like that nice and gentle like I say very little amount on the brush just to make it look at its best there you go and then it's gonna go over the top here over this little scope a scope sight, give it a little bit of metal there. Lovely jabbly. Looking good. Okay, so that's that there. I'll continue for the rest of the rifle onto the boots and the boots uh, buckles. Do that as well. Let's get a bit more paint on there. There we, there we go. So one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, I'll do the same on that boot, same on the rest of the rifle, and we shall come back once that is done. Okay guys, all the metal's done, got the rifle, got the uh, little boot belt buckles, boot back buckles, whatever, they're done as well. So, with that done, what's next is, Bosch, a bit of Mephiston Red, oh yeah. Okay, so we're going to wet the brush again. Uh, with this brush, I probably should have said what brush I used beforehand, sorry, but I use a very fine, slim brush, the artificial layer, it's extra small for the metal. You can dry brush it, as I say, it's a personal preference, there's no right or wrong. I find I prefer to paint it on models where you've got little bits, like the little rifle scope there, the end there. It's not worth going mad, 
doing a load of dry brushing in my opinion um, so next up I'm going to use the artificial layer just the standard small brush it's been pre-wetted so a little bit wet on the brush always a very thin thin tiny little amount of wet you brush the rest off on the tissue got a little bit left over so then I'm just going to get a little brush on so a little bit of red and this is my fist and red as it is straight from the pot and what we're going to do is we're going to paint all the tunic as you can see it so all the tunic here here um, on his back there as well but we're also going to paint the you'll see on this model on the iron guard there's some small lines there on his trousers on either side that we will paint red as well and also the band uh, let's try and get you to see it I don't know if you can see it the band around his helmet on oh, a helmet is a cap They'll be painted red as well. Okay, so let's crack on with that then. Okay, here we go. So just as it is, make sure the brush is nice and wet so it makes the brush the paint nice and smooth to um, apply to the model. You don't a thick amount of paint. It's nothing worse than a thick amount of paint because that really sort of spoils the model, it spoils the paint. It's too much. The less is more when it comes to uh, painting these guys, you know. Don't hesitate to quickly dab your brush off in the paint in the water, in your water or something. Go back over the paint again. Um, make sure it's nice and thin. Uh, worst comes to worst, you can always do a couple of coats of this as well. Okay, so show you a couple of little spots there. So here on the leg, as I'm saying, as best you can see. There we go. All the way down. Okay, so that's one leg done there, look. There's the other side. Got the other leg here. There it is. There we go. Now sometimes it's quite tricky. You can see I've got a little bit of spill there. That doesn't matter. That's a tiny amount. To be quite honest, just painting the dagger and the colour. I intend to paint the dagger in. We'll cover up a multitude of sins there. But uh, you get the general gist of it, so yeah, continue working around the model, painting my fist in red as is, watered down a little bit as usual, and uh, we'll come back shortly. And here we go, he's all painted up, nice shade of red. My fist in red over all the sections that he needs to have red, so you can see on his legs, all on his coat, the red band on his hat. Um, I hope you can see this all nicely. I've tried to put a white uh, board up so it sort of captures the light nicely, but. He is all done, nice and done with my um, fist and red. So next up, go to the highlights on the red coat. Get that done so it's all out of the way, nice and crisp. So what we're going to do is literally, I'm going to use my fist and red as usual with Evil Sun Scarlet. Now how you need to mix this up, guys, is literally if you splodge your paintbrush and that, put some of that onto your mixing tray. You then do the exact same amount of uh, of dip with your paintbrush into this one mix the two together so it's literally 50 50 mix of both of these and you'll use this for the highlight on the edges uh, the crinkles on his top and what I tend to do is edge on the outskirts of his of this model so if I can use my little paint paintbrush to sort of point out where we're going to be going this will give you a rough guide so what we're going to be doing get it focused a little bit better he says really nearly so we're going to be doing the edges along here uh, we're going to be doing all the little crinkles you hopefully can see um, on his arm it's all the little bits all there I'll do one little highlight along each side of his uh, trousers and also on the back of his jacket see the lines there see like a seam line for his jacket I'll highlight on both sides of that along the shoulders um, along his collar Basically, where there's raised areas or where there's like a crinkle effect in his uh, jacket, that's where the highlight will go, as all highlights should go, basically. That's what I'll be doing. Okay, so, like I say, fifth, literally, splodge, splodge, mix it together, all the raised areas, so all like the creases, all the corners-ish, um, you know, to, to exaggerate the shadows. That's what you're looking for. So, I shall crack on with that, and I'll see you in a second. And there we go. So the first highlights have been applied. Uh, let's pick him up so you can see him a little bit better, I hope. Uh, is he in a focus? I think he has. Yeah, it's looking okay. So there's the first highlights on his coat. Done. 
let's get in there. There you go. Hopefully you can see the difference. There you go, come back. So that's the first highlight done as coat. So for the third and final highlight for his red jacket, it's literally a case of the same process, picking up all the higher raised details of the jacket, but for this layer we're simply using just Evil Sun Scarlet as it is straight out of the pot. And that will be done for the red jacket. So final layer coming up. And the third layer is done. So there we go. Just gonna see if I can get a better angle on oh, no, this model. So on the third layer, which is the Evil Sun Scarlet, where are we? There we go. And uh, yeah, it's a bit better. You can see the, see the uh, highlights better now, I hope. So yeah, there is third highlights done. Go on the back, and there you go. And see it. Hopefully, you can see it nice. I hope you can. There's the third highlight. So the key is the fist and red first, and then simply pick out the raised areas of the model to get the best of the uh, highlights. This way, you eliminate the need for washes. Um, you eliminate the need for all the expense and the hassle of sort of using loads of different washes time and time again, all the different things uh, when there's no need for it whatsoever. So, the next stage is what should we go for? Let's go for white. So, okay, what we're going to do for the white then is quite simply the cap, uh, the peak of the cap at the front here, obviously. We're going to do his belt and we're going to do all that white, all that trim which is still in black on his coat that is all going to be white there's no need for you guys to see me start doing that because you'll be able to see and tell for yourself what that is obviously also the spauldrons and also the his little uh, packs he's got on the side there all of the all the all the cloth all the belt all that sort of stuff that is going to be white ceramite white so i want to crack on with that and i'll catch you guys in a few minutes starting to take shape now I think guys isn't he so all the ceramite white has been painted onto his uh, coat and whatnot so give a little gentle spin as best you can see so his knife has had the skull white put on and his handle has also had the little white on the little uh, cloth material grip of his uh, the handle of his knife a dagger it's been painted white as well there's little uh, the spaldons have been painted Belt, obviously, going all the way around. His cap, uh, his little uh, belts, uh, bag, sorry, packs, whatever you want to call them. They've been painted white, and obviously his cap and uh, peak of the cap as well. So, all done. There he is, looking rather sharp and snazzy. I recommend taking your time with this because you're painting white straight onto black. Now, for the edging of his uh, tunics, very easy to do. Just simply take your time, take it steady. Get the slimmest, smoothest brush that you can, just to go along the edges, it's your best bet. Take your time. For the top of his cap, you'll need to use a few layers of watered down white paint. Um, I simply go straight from black undercut onto white, uh, without any sort of shading of greys or anything like that. Um, simply to keep the model quick to paint, basically, to, you know, if you see what I mean. When you bear in mind you're painting white, uh, I tend not to bother using many highlights for white and especially for infantry where it's just Mordian Iron Guardsmen there's no need to because there's such you know there's going to be so many of them when you're playing your games and unless you really want to make them stand out then by all means I'd recommend using a, a, any sort of light grey first and then painting them white over that otherwise keep them just as they are as I've done here as you can see it works well it's made the red highlights pop more um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. It's too good. And again, with the little tassels, the little tassels of his uh, spalding there. Take your time going down each one, one by one, with your brush. And look really, really smart. Okay, next up, we're going to do two things. XV88. That's going to go onto his rifle, the wood of his rifle. And also, we're going to get Mournfane Brown in on the action for his boots. Simply as they are, no mixes, no darkening of the colours. Just straight out of the pot with a little bit of water as usual. One for the boots, one for brown, X388 for the rifle. I'll crack on with that and we'll see the results afterwards. So, Mourn Fang Brown and XV88 has been applied. Uh, here we go, just picking on gently. So, there's the boots, pardon for my thumb there. So, there's the boots done. The rifle has been painted up nicely as well, spinning them around. And there you go, simple as that. So what we're going to do, shock horror, 
we're not going to worry about highlighting the boots. I very rarely actually bother to highlight any of my model's uh, footwear because I find once you've actually based it, got all the scenery on the base, it just draws away from the shoes. It's, it's as simple as that in my opinion. Unless the other creatures, unless whatever model you're painting has got like uh, exposed feet, you can see toes or the boots are really elaborate. I just don't bother. Also I tend to paint the sand on bases with Mornfang Brown and with uh, static grass um, dribbled over the top of that as well. It, it, it just doesn't work. Personally for me, I'd rather spend more time painting the more obvious parts of the model than the shoes. But having said that, we will be highlighting the uh, rifle uh, shade of wood, as I've painted it with wood, if you see what I mean. That's my intention. Give it that sort of vintage look, even though he's a sci-fi futuristic soldier. But uh, the highlight for that is going to be XV88 again, with simply a little blob of a uh, ceramite white. So you're literally going to have 50 50 mix of white with XV88 into your little mixing pan, and that's the only highlight we're going to have for the rifle. Back in two ticks. Taking shape now, guys. I think it's done it really good. So, highlight's been applied to the rifle. I hope you can see it. Very conscious if you guys can't see. Looks too blurry now. I think it's coming out okay. It's hard to tell with how I'm working. Um, so like I say, this is a bit of a you know, trial as we go along. Uh, that looks a bit better, but there's the rifle's highlights. There he is. You see the red looking quite nice as well. So there you go, there's his highlights done. So next up, we're going to do gold on his belt buckle and gold on the top of his handle of his dagger and the two dark areas left of the actual holster of his dagger are going to be painted gold as well. Gold we're going to be using is of course where are we, there we are, Geller's Gold. Okay guys, so I'll get that going and we'll see you in a second. There we go, Geller's Gold has been applied. I forgot to say to paint gold onto the Aquila of the rifle and onto the hat as well. But there's the belt buckle, golden, and there's his dagger the very top of his dagger gold and of course the two extra parts of the uh, dagger holster whatever you want to call those, the mouth, the scabbard or something uh, gold as well, simple as that uh, right, so <clears throat> he's taking shape, he's basically done now there's just one last uh, spot to go for, obviously and that is his skin tones <clears throat> excuse me, apologies if my throat's a bit rough it's feeling pretty damn sore uh, this evening for some reason don't know why uh, all, to, all that talking I think um, <clears throat> but what we're going to do is for his skin tones is we're going to use Kislev Flesh with Mournfang Brown <clears throat> and we're going to use a 50-50 mix so literally splodge of that, splodge of that mix it together, bosh straight onto his hands obviously and onto his face as best you can on this one it's going to be a bit tricky in places but on his face as best you can and uh, we'll go from there. Again, I recommend a very fine, thin ended brush for this, definitely. Okay, guys, so 50 50 mix of both of these and onto the skin all over as best you can. Okay, guys, just from an interest point of view, um, the, the color you want to go for for the dark shade of the initial flesh uh, color is this here. This is the sort of mix you want to go for, real light brown looking sort of color. That is what we almost coffee, to be honest, isn't it? Nice dark coffee looking colour. Um, and we're going to want to use that for the basis of all of his uh, skin tone areas. So, on his hand. Oh, there, nice and lovely. There we go. And of course, work anyway, all on his hands there and his face as usual. Okay, don't forget, water's always to wet it down with. And uh, we'll see the finished article in one second. Okie dokie. So, basic skin tone has been applied. And also, I'd forgotten about the collar. The little white rim of the collar there. So that has just been painted white. But, uh, yep, there he is. He's looking good. Skin tone's been painted up nicely. He's kind of well. On his hands, on his fingers, look. So, what we do... Very simply for the highlight, is now we go back over again all the raised areas. So, I'm going to do this literally well. The color I'm going to use is just kiss their flesh, just as it is, watered down as usual. Kiss their flesh. Um, I'm going to go over each digit of his fingers, so each finger 
I'm going to do a highlight across his knuckle, highlight across that little, just see there, the edge. If I use my paintbrush, we're going to see better. So I'll do a highlight going across there, that little shining area of the skin. Going to cut, uh, color that, color that, same with that hand. And then on his face, his half face that we can see, we're going to do the nose, the cheek coming down, and the ear. And that will be all for the highlights for his skin. Again, keeping it nice and simple for the Praetorian colours that I use, how I paint with them, how I use it. For rank and file troops, this is plenty of nice uh, highlights and gives them a lovely pop. See you in one second. Here we go, guys. And highlight has been applied to the skin. So you can see it quite nicely there, actually. Highlight the skin there on his ear, on his fingers, on his uh, hand. There you go. Kushti. So, he's basically done. That is how you paint the Praetorian. I have the colours I use. The only thing I am going to add to him um, is a little bit of... Let's find it. Ulrich Armour Gold. I'm going to add that to all of his uh, gold sections, obviously. Apologies, that's my little uh, bracelet things. Jingly jangling. Okay, let's just get a tiniest, tiniest little smidge of gold on the paintbrush. I don't need a huge amount for this. And uh, here we go. So, I find it quite easy to sim just go over it. Just, blob, just a simple line. I find this this paint, I find quite watery actually. I don't know if anyone else is the same thing. I find it quite a simple paint to paint with. There we go. Cotton, there's that. Because of because it's so watery, as you can probably tell from what I'm doing, I'm lightly touching the bristles on the actual raised area of the uh, what do you call it, the aquila, as it were. And instantly, it just it just lends itself to the to the to the model to the sculpt. It's, it's quite interesting. I don't know if anyone else is the same thing, but I find with that with this particular paint, it does do that. So I do the same thing here. Across, I do the sides, sides just along the top. And then I'm just going to do a nice C shape, oh, a little bit more. And then for that bottom part where the dagger sits and it's a little scabbard, that's what you call a dagger's storage area or, you know, whatever it is, scabbard, I assume it must be. Or you think I'd know studying Eido all these years, but there you go. I know the Japanese term for it, not the uh, futuristic sci fi term. Okay, so there you go, C shape highlight on the dagger there. And there you are. That, my friends, is how you paint a uh, Mordian Iron Guard in a Praetorian style colour. Um, I'm not going to base him, or well, I'm not going to sh show you how to base a model, because I'm sure you guys know how to do it. It's simply a case of PVA glue all along the bottom here. A little bit of sand, either dunk the model into a pot of sand and wiggle him around, tap off the excess, or you can sprinkle the sand over it, and then let it dry, paint it to the colour you want, and then simply stick on anything else you want after that. Stones, static grass, you name it. I always go for a little stone or two and some static grass of a light colour. But with these guys, I am simply sticking to uh, the sand, painting it grey and leaving it just like that. And that's for my own theme of like a futuristic cityscape that they're fighting over. Um, so there you go. It's as simple as that. I do hope it's been helpful for you guys. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Apologies if it seems a bit rough and ready. It's not the most professional video, so I can imagine. Um, but I just wanted to give it a try. Uh, show people how I paint. And genuinely, this is exactly how I paint. The results I get is from doing this. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this camera's given it the justice, but all the models that I painted with, is it's exactly like this. I'll make my own shades. I make my own highlights, uh, use my own washes, although I didn't use any washes here, but I do my own uh, washes as well to an extent. Um, but I find if you, you know the main base colours you want, reds, blues, browns, greens, generally simply adding some black uh, will darken the colour. So you've got the initial like dark under undercoat shade. You then simply paint the actual colour you want. So as I did, basically, um, I'd use a... Uh, for more detail, I should say, I'd use uh, Mephiston Red with a bit of black, 
paint that on first, then adjust my fist in red onto that, and then as we've just watched the same process, and I'll use that for any other colour. Um, for rank and file troops, as you've just seen through this video, I'll stick with probably just the original actual base shade as it is, and then highlight it using either white or reds and yellows don't tend to lend too well to being highlighted with just a mix of white. It can make them go off colour. You have to vary it a little bit. If that is the case, use a lighter shade of the shade you're painting with. So if you're painting with Mournfang Brown, I wouldn't quite recommend it, but use a lighter shade of brown, like XV88 afterwards. Experiment that sort of way. But generally that is what I do. That's the way I work. I, I, I you know, have a budget. So I'll paint, I'll, I'll buy as many paints as I can um, and just sort of work around that. I mean, that my paint collection is pretty small, to be quite honest, and I want to get some very varied results um, simply through just having a, you know, a little mess around with the paints and stuff. You can do it cheap. Um, and it's, it's just, it's more, I find it more fun as well. But uh, I do hope you guys have enjoyed it. I do hope you uh, get something out of this if you do. If you don't, if you have any recommendations or any requests, I'm happy to uh, look into doing requests and things for um, you know paints and tips and you know videos and how I do stuff, even little things, you know, any tips on how to paint a face, how to paint details on a tank. I, I uh, will be doing a video soon on how to paint the uh, tiger tiger teeth or shark's teeth as such onto vehicles, World War Two esque, you know. Uh, so keep an eye on, keep an eye open for that. But uh, yeah, that's everything. Do hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, guys. Happy modelling. And as always, rock and roll. See you soon.